What's going on guys? It's Troy Dan here. And today, we are going to be watching the longest player suspensions in NBA history. Is it Ron Artest? It's probably Rudy Gobert. Did he cancel the whole season? Listen, I don't know who it is. I'm going to assume it's actually probably Ron Artest. If you don't remember, he elbowed someone in the face and punched someone in the face and also punched someone else in the face. And I think I punched a fan, too. Probably a few other people. If I haven't seen it, link in the description below. Make sure it's sub 30 times. Go. The National Basketball Association is one of the most popular leagues in the world, and its yes. stars are globally popular. Kyle Lowry, look at his caboose. And make the most dollars. The NBA has a strict policy dealing with problems that would impact the popularity of the game. True. However, there were instances where the NBA players didn't abide by the rules. Oh, look who it is. The topic of this Whoa. video. As we're going to reveal which are the longest NBA suspensions of all time. There's the malice in the palace. Performance enhancing drug suspensions, 25 games, four players. In a game based on athleticism, jumping ability, and endurance, there have been rare cases of steroid use. Rare. Course, the NBA has a very light policy towards checking for steroids. That's right. They only started LeBron. testing for certain drugs, such as HGH, just a couple of years ago. We're not making any accusations or assumptions. Is LeBron on steroids? D yes or no? Nah? Just the elephant in the room. Yes or no? Nah? He's do. We're just saying it. Still, despite such light testing, Might be. Vito Turkoglu was one of the first players in the modern era that failed I a drug this. test due to performance-enhancing drugs. He got tested for methanolone and got suspended he was on meth? for 20 games. 20 Before games for meth? his drug test, prior anti-drug suspensions were usually reserved for cocaine and marijuana. I didn't know After he did meth. Nick Calathis also got 20 games for tamoxifen, which he said he used to prevent hair loss. If we look Heroin? at Nick's hairline, they can totally understand and approve the use of the drug. Joe Kim Noah got the same suspension a couple of years later while he was a member of the Knicks, where he got $18 million per year for not playing. In Noah's words, New York was too lit for him. <laughs> too lit for New York. And we can say that we understand. Yo, why he Joe Kim Noah. I didn't know Joe Kim Noah was like a hippie. I didn't understand this was Joe Kim Noah. Well, since then, the league extended a suspension for PED use from 20 to 25 games. Oh, you and can't do DeAndre PEDs Aiden no more? And John Collins served a 25-game suspension for oh. failed drug tests. I didn't know that. 19, 20 NBA I didn't know DeAndre Aiden did a prohibited diuretic, while Collins got the penalty for a growth hormone stimulant. Oh, Tony man. Meeks and Wilson Chandler both received the same suspension for similar violations in 2018 and 2019. Oh, interesting. As we mentioned before, the NBA had extremely light drug testing. And it's not surprising that the majority of the PED suspensions were handed in the last couple of years. Interesting. The good old days when Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes were only tested once a year and could smoke weed before every game are now over. Kermit Washington. Well, no, didn't they didn't they allow are you allowed to smoke dope now? I think that changed. Maybe this isn't hasn't been updated. One punch KO. 26 game suspension. Kermit the Fraggle here. If Kermit Washington wasn't a basketball oh, player, oh, this he oh, made sorry. A in boxing. He proved this on the night of December 9th, 1977. Oh, wait, why? When a fight broke out between yes. him and the Rockets' Kevin Cunner. Those two got tangled up and exchanged punches in the middle of the court. Jeez. That wouldn't have been so bad if it ended there. Once the original fight began, several other players rushed over to intervene. Yeah, one of them being Kareem Abdul Jabbar, a teammate of Washington. Rudy Tomjanovich, Rudy, a 29 year old all star forward for the Rockets was also running towards the players gathered around Washington and yeah. Cunner in an attempt to break up the fight, just like Jabbar. Kermit saw Tom Janovich running towards him and thinking Smacked that him, dude. To fight him. What is this? First. It was a devastating blow to the head from the six I hate Kermit the Frog. Not Kermit the Frog, this, this guy. And the impact I hate Kermit. Was Kermit Washington. Because Tom Janovich ran full speed into the punch. He fell down, and a puddle of blood began spreading on the court, Unreal. revealing the severity of the situation. Jabbar later described the sound of the punch similar to a watermelon falling onto the concrete. Oh, great. That's awesome. was able to walk around after the punch and even confronted Washington verbally after the game before he got sent to the hospital by team officials. And when he got huh. there, he heard an ugly truth. His nose and jaw were broken, and his face was fractured about one-third of an inch away from his skull resulting in spinal fluid leaking into his skull capsule. Jeez. He was lucky to be walking and lucky to be alive. It took him five months to get back to the court. Day he I made a full recovery. He did? On the other hand, I thought he died. Washington served a 26-game suspension. That's it? Which was the longest suspension after an in-game incident at the time. 
Wow. Guns and Roses. <laughs> Gilbert Arenas, bang, bang. <laughs> Guns. I love it. Gilbert Arenas and Javaris Crittenden. Javaris Crittenden. Games. Bang, bang. He shot me down. Bang, bang. Unlike the other suspensions on this list, <laughs> the third biggest suspension of all time wasn't at all related to basketball. Gilbert Arenas well, was among many NBA players who liked to gamble on planes, specifically a card game called Boo Ray. What? It's the most popular card game amongst NBA players to this day. Is that on a PlayStation? Game that caused thousands of Kobe. dollars, Rolexes, and Rolls Royces exchange owners, all during the really? course of an NBA team flight. Oh my Gilbert God! Arenas there's an alcoholic. Got suspended 50 games for carrying four guns into the NBA. Oh locker. my! as a part of a calling your bluff move to Javaris Crittenton. A couple of days earlier, Wait, what? Crittenton threatened to shoot Arenas over a game of Boo Ray, and a good teammate that he was, Arenas brought four guns to Crittenton so he could, in fact, shoot him. <laughs> I didn't know that's how it went down. It was all a big joke to Arenas, but Crittenton had a loaded gun of his own in the locker room, and suddenly the situation wasn't as funny as it seemed at first. Other players scattered this gun drawing scene, and the word got out that there are guns in the NBA locker room, which was a oh, big no-no in the eyes of holier-than-thou NBA that David Stern was trying to create and portray. He suspended huh. both Arenas and Crittenton till the end of the season. Wow. Arenas later repealed and managed to reduce the suspension to 50 games. Jesus. Crittenton's suspension ended up at 38 games as the Wizards released him following the suspension. He never played a minute in the NBA again. Wow, damn, Sprewell that's tough. choking incident, 68 games. Oh, it's Mr. Chokeswell! I know about this guy. Charles Sprewell was one of the most physically gifted NBA players. He loved to choke white men. And NBA fans remember him for being a defensive ace that brought the New York Knicks on the brink of a title in 1999. However, he is also known for some other reasons. Most notably for turning down a $21 million three-year contract extension with the explanation that oh, his yeah. kids have to eat. And that's not the type of money that will do the trick. Yeah, the other thing no Sprewell is up. famous for got him suspended for 68 games. It all happened in 1997. When Sprewell they think of people that are not intelligent in the league, some of the dumber people, it's clearly one of the names that comes Sprewell up. Sprewell was a member of the Golden State Warriors, a team that drafted him and saw him become a three-time All-Star and a first-team All-NBA member. But Trell Sprewell is such a basketball-sounding name. He was too, undoubtedly the star of the team. It's got a 90s smell to it. when Coach P.J. Carlissimo asked him to pass the Latrell ball better Sprewell. during practice, Charles Sprewell Barkley. was in no mood and brushed him off. Carlissimo continued with criticism and approached his player, and then something in Sprewell snapped, and he went mad. He threatened to kill Carlissimo Jeez. and would maybe succeed in doing so if there weren't other people around. Sprewell put his hands onto the coach's neck and choked him for about 10 seconds. 10 seconds? Dragged him over the court like a rag doll before others thankfully intervened. Huh. The reporters who cover the team asked wow. Carlissimo after practice about the apparent marks on his neck, to which he replied, no comment. Huh. The NBA sniffed out the truth about the incident, and Latrell was subsequently suspended for 82 games without pay. It should have been, I think it should be indefinite. 68. He was never the same player after that. Malice Good. at the palace. Good. No, not Ben. Oh, man. Ben Wallace and Ron Artest. Ben, thank you. Follows me on Twitter. Ron Artest used to follow me on Twitter, but doesn't anymore. I don't know what I say. 131 games. I don't know what I did. Before Ron Artest changed his name to Meta World Peace. Isn't he Ron he again? anything but World Peace. Or did he change it again? As soon as he got to the league. Oh, God. Artest I remember watching this game. Himself as a physical player. He's a great Laker effort. times. And he well, was a mine prototype is that. of a 90s style of basketball. No backing down. Competitive. Our test was good. And sometimes violent. In 2004, our test yeah. won the Defensive Player of the Year. Award. Yeah. However, his Indiana Pacers fell in Eastern Conference Finals for the later champions, Detroit Pistons. That was, the two that teams was a crazy met again year. next season. It was a chance for Indiana to get their revenge. The game was circled on their calendars, and they played fantastic, with our test leading the way to a 15 point lead with less than one minute left on the clock. When Detroit's Ben Wallace attempted to score near the basket in what should have been one of the final possessions, Artest fouled him extra hard. I didn't realize it happened so late the in the ground. game. Wallace retaliated. 
and a scuffle ensued. Oh, oh, all the Ben said, oh, Ben, a big dude. That is a big dude. Wasn't looking good. They're all big These dudes. pushing and shoving matches happen from time to time, and they are soon over without much consequence. But not on this occasion. <laughs> While Artest was trying to calm himself down, <laughs> he laid down on the scores table. In Detroit, still all places. Wallace threw a cup at Artest from a distance, which served as an example for Pistons fans who started throwing stuff at Artest as well. Oh One my! Thing, John Green was really accurate with his Diet Coke that night. <laughs> he threw a cup at Artest, which hit him right in the chest. Artest gave what? And rightfully so. Mind, and went to the stands to get his revenge. Man, I, oh Soon lord. Enough, Steven Jackson and Jermaine O'Neal were in the stands as I mean, well, those fans trying to it. help out Artest. What was supposed to be a minor skirmish between two hothead NBA players? Yeah, the fans, the fans are asking for it. Three I'm NBA not even mad at those hilarious in the stands. When he got back on the court, another fan confronted Artest. I love it. <laughs> ultimately being escorted to the arena, with many cups, chairs, and multiple other objects thrown at him. Other sure, the Jermaine O'Neal punch. It was one of the ugliest scenes in basketball. Oh man, history. I should get that frame. The game that produced the biggest suspension in league history. Artest got suspended for 86 games. Jackson got 30, and O'Neal 25, which later got reduced to 15. Oh. They cumulatively lost over 11 million dollars in salary, and to this day, wow. this remains the ugliest on-court incident ever in the NBA. Yeah. In a night that will forever be called Malice, Malice at the, the Palace. Palace. Banned players. Oh, here we go. Other than suspensions, there have also been players who served multi-year bans from the league. Okay. And had to be reinstated in order to play again. Tyreek Evans is the most recent example of that. What did he do? He got a two-year ban on May 17th, 2019. He was banned for violating the league's anti-drug policy regarding drug abuse and will be eligible to apply for reinstatement in 2021. OJ really? Mayo got the exact same penalty back in I 2016. Knew OJ did. Mayo was one of the best players of his generation, and he got drafted by the Timberwolves. Did you... Best players of his generation? You've been smoking that OJ Mayo. What is he talking about? This NBA guy, draft. would you watch baseball? He did have a promising start to his career, averaging 18.5 points and establishing himself as a great three-point shooter. Unfortunately, his rookie year was also his best year. And even though he was a serviceable player, he never fulfilled the potential. He liked weed. So just say it. Draft. He loved to smoke. Just when the NBA was in the middle of a three-point revolution, which would greatly serve Mayo's skills in the prime of his physical abilities, he also got suspended by the league for drug abuse. He was eligible to apply for reinstatement in 2018, but never did. He even wants to smoke that dope. A.K.A. Birdman. Did this guy touch a kid? penalty in 2006. And was reinstated in 2000. Oh no, it's for weight. I thought Later he did something with Miami a cage. Heat when it Maybe that's Carl Malone. 2013. Other than Birdman, Mayo, and Evans, six more players received multi-year bans from the league for drug abuse, uh -oh. which are the longest suspensions ever handed by the NBA. That's LAX. I know that place. Oh, it's over. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, I learned some new things today, and I've saw some things that well. Some things refresh my memory. The Malice in the Palace, what a great time. Great. I didn't realize uh, Mr. Tariki Evans was out right now on uh, a drug find. What do you do? We're going to find out. I got to look that up. We'll Google it later. Anyway, did you learn anything today? Longest suspensions? I didn't realize that the 80, was it 82 games? Was it 82 games that Ron Test got? I didn't realize that's still the longest suspension. I thought there was something else that beat it, but yeah, I guess not. I guess that's still it. Guys, if you got a video like for me to watch or react to, you can tweet me at Troyden under the hashtag TroydenReacts. Thank you for watching, and kids, stay out of trouble.